Good morning, and welcome to another Moribund episode of Diatribes, from the Voice of Doom. And now here's your insipid and incipient host, Voice of Doom. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Announcer. Uh... Wanted to continue in the same vein as my last uh, diatribe because I can just keep blending things together. Connect school board meetings with China, with the border, with the pandemic, with the oppression, with the atrocities, and I can tie everything together and just let it flow. So. I chanted and did my morning practice before my diatribe because it helps clear my mind and now I feel like I should do it because if I don't then I'm all befuddled and maybe through chanting and trying to connect with the mystic law I can, you know, try to say the right thing, say something that might, you know, strike a chord with anybody who might watch this sometime in the next century. Um, but I feel gratitude when I chant, because even if the world is going to hell, um, and maybe my life isn't completely altogether organized correctly, uh, I still have it pretty good, and my kids have it pretty good, and my parents and relatives have it pretty good, you know. Comparatively speaking to the rest of the people who have to inhabit this planet, a lot of people get a bad, you know, hand dealt to them. And as Americans, and I use that word in the terms of a group of people who share ideals that are above just going after each other and going um, to our own advantage. Um, you know what I mean. We don't have to bribe the policemen when they pull us over. Everything's fair, more or less, in America. You know, those core things. That when those go away, which they are going away, then we know we're done. But I feel gratitude. And when I feel gratitude, then I feel a hope for the future. And I want to give you some hope for the future. And it's going to happen after the conflagration. So when I hope for the future, I hope that if there were 15,000 people at the border two weeks ago, I want there to be 150,000 all at once. And not only that, I want another 150,000 10 miles away ready to come up and press in. I want 150,000 people at the border, so it's so overwhelming that the border patrols and the people at the border just throw up their hands and say, let's go get a drink. Forget this. It's beyond the possibility of doing anything because you try to stop one incident and there's something happening over here. So let's just drop all pretenses. Let's get the hell out of here. Go have a drink. Go have a shot because that's what's going to happen. And I hope for that. I want it to happen. I want China to attack Taiwan once and for all. Let's get this over with. Let's just see what happens. You see all the so-called Western countries, which are on the Eastern Hemisphere, but they're Western countries such as Japan and Australia galvanizing. For what? For a limited war? With China? I mean, in this day and age, either a big country or a bunch of big countries attack a poor caveman country or some country out in the desert or just don't do anything because there's no in-between. It's not going to be a limited engagement between Australia, Japan, China, India, and maybe the United States if they let us in to play. 
yeah, limited. So let's just get it over with. Attack. China doesn't need a pretext to Xi Jinping, Shikogruber. Um, <clears throat> Taiwan is China's uh, Rhineland. They feel like it's their territory. They never felt that it wasn't their territory, and it's like now we're going to finally, you know, claim what's ours. And since you've always said there's only one China, then there's going to be one China, and it's going to be in that region, and then it's going to spread. Um, Uyghurs are being held as they did back in other wars and being exterminated and otherwise abused. Okay, so, you know, let it come to a head already. That's my hope for the future because the sooner we get this conflagration over with, the sooner we can move on and move on to the first turning of a creative artistic society that is beyond these petty, you know, building battleships and submarines, wasting money just to bomb them, building walls just to tear them down. What kind of society is it that one guy can say, let's build a wall and let's take millions of dollars and billions of dollars to move all this stuff down to build the wall, and then the next guy comes along and says, no, we're not going to, and just leave all the stuff down there and all the billions of dollars, oh, well, that was just wasted. In fact, we'll spend more money just to bring this stuff back. And now what are we going to do with these big pieces of metal? You know, play a giant dominoes game? You shouldn't be allowed to do that because that's our money, so supposedly tax money. I don't know where they get it from. They make it out of whole cloth. But, you know, whatever money it is, it could be better well spent if they gave me some of it. Instead of spending a hundred billion dollars to take pieces of metal down to the border and then someone else pays hundreds of billions to bring it back. So that can't go on. So get it over with. Let the bombs fall and let's see what happens. Let's see what Petri dish does. I'd love to see that. And speaking of Petri, I love these media guys. Still they're on this thing like just wait till 2022 in the election. Even if their b biggest dreams come true, even if their side takes every single seat in the Congress and takes every single governorship in the United States, and they're still going to have Petri dish in there, and they're not going to do a damn thing. They never have, and they never will. It's like, okay... You caught the bus, dog. Now what are you going to do with it? It's like solve all the problems that we caused in the past 75 years. So it's hopeless and it's laughable for them to say 2022. And then they, this is always funny. It's happened since, well, at least for the past 40 years. Um, these people hate whoever is president occupying that chair or doing whatever they do in the chair and uh, then they say say Trump for instance oh Trump spent 147 days playing golf and it's like so what are you saying you hate the guy you hate everything he does and then you complain because he takes too much time off and it's the same with these guys on the, the marginalized news that say, um, you know, the president, Sleepy Joe, you know, went to bed at 3.30. He entered his day at 4 o'clock. It's like, well, you want him to work harder? You want him to work all day? Let's see if uh, Petri Dish had the same work energy as the last president. And when I say last, I mean last. Um we'd be dead, all of us, every one of us would be dead if he had that kind of work ethic because everything he's done has been damaging. Can't you see that? Come on. I get sick of having to explain this to you guys. So, equity. I've been seeing that word, equity and diversity and equity. Let's 
have all kinds of people doing things evenly with equity so that, you know, we need the same number of brain surgeons and we need the same number. I've, most of the doctors I see aren't white, okay? I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, equity. Um, it's funny because... I mean, there's no, there's so much inequity that it's not even funny because from what I've seen since at least 1994 is that one side can do whatever the hell they want and they have the entire multimedia complex on their side to not, you know, pay any attention to any of their iniquities or inequities or iniquities or sins. They ignore them. And yet on the other side, the smallest small things, a phone call, a tweet, or an email from 1992 that gets them, you know, a hearing. They have to have hearings now. And it's so obvious, and people put up with it, and that's the sad part. I'll tell you right now, that's the freaking sad part of the whole damn thing, is everybody just puts up with it and says, yeah, it's unfair, but what can we do? Tell you what you do. What you do is you do like they do at the border and you get 150,000 people at the gate of the White House and you take shifts so that they're always there. They never leave. 150,000 people at the White House gates and every time someone tries to maintain order, you get another 150,000 people down there just to tell them what kind of order we're going to have. We are not going to leave until you guys get the hell out. I've given them more than enough time to resign. And I've also called for their arrest, which has been ignored. And they should be arrested for manslaughter. I told you why a long time ago. I'm getting a little bit mad. And I kind of get mad at <clears throat> when people complain about the supply chain and all the barges that are um, stuck in L.A. Harbor. And it's not going to be Christmas for the kids because all the merchandise from China isn't being unloaded. Now, I mean, is China, are we with them or against them? Or are we working together? Are they buying stuff from us? Are we shipping stuff to China? We can't make toys in America. I guess we can make tinker toys. We can make... Things like Lincoln Logs in America, but I guess we can't make those sophisticated toys that kids want. Like the phones, that they can glue their face to for the rest of their life. So, I felt sorry for some people in the media who have been intrepid journalists and have been in the fray of Afghanistan since the place was uh, established in 750. And he was bemoaning the fact that the car that he ordered for his daughter for her 16th birthday had, it was going to be a four month delivery time wait. So I was sorry about that. And I was worried about all the things on those barges that I might have wanted to order from Amazon that aren't there because I wanted to get a new shirt because I'm wearing the same thing over and over again. And I really don't want to pay American prices because, uh, you know, to spend $150 for a t-shirt doesn't seem, you know, fiscally sound. So I got a lot of subjects in there, and I still didn't talk about China, other than the fact that uh, the guy's a madman. I didn't say that, but I will say it. And go back to Meguo about 30 episodes ago, and you'll see why. So he's getting ready to do a lot of damage because he doesn't care what happens. He has no dog in the fight. Xi Jing. He has no dog in the fight. It doesn't matter to him if China is blown to smithereens or not. And if you go back to my videos, you'll see why. Or you can find out for yourself without me. Because you won't see this, so you won't go back. So I'm meandering. It's over. I think I said enough. And hopefully I scared you, and I can come back next episode and scare you more. But yeah, let's get this over with. I, I want the conflagration quickly. 
three hundred, four hundred thousand people at the border, and you know, then let um, the cartel start encroaching into the United States and and uh, establishing uh, bulkheads and strongholds, Battle of the Bulge, whatever you want to call it. Then we'll see what happens. You'll see that my second or third video will come true. You'll see exactly what happens. So, Voice of Doom, signing off. That was pretty good. I think I enjoyed that. And I'll see you on another episode, maybe soon. Bye.